So it's going to start off with, um, uh, I, I reiterate that I think everyone should save everything they've ever written. Do not throw away anything, do not incinerate anything. You'll be surprised, you'll thank yourself one day. And uh, especially since you'll get to see your upward progression, your self-evolution. That being said, <laughs> these are, uh, <laughs> oh God, these are two pieces I wrote. Um, so what I've done was, over the years, I've collected scraps of paper and uh, placed them all in this one notebook and then typed them all up, edited them. I've, and it turns out I've been writing since 1995 and um, all the way up till now. Jane, you're not gonna wanna miss this. <laughs> Um, so, um, these two particular pieces I wrote when I was in sixth grade, but the way they look, I'd like to say maybe late fifth grade, and uh, they were uh, for a school assignment, and uh, poems about Egypt. <laughs> so, and after reading them, I, and I do remember uh, growing up I read pretty much all the children's poets, Shel Silverstein, Jack Polesky, Ogden Nash, some others in between. Even, I mean, I even read the, uh, just very, uh, very mature books even back then. I even read the Odyssey back then. It was, it was wonderful. So, goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Um, so this is just called The First Poem. <laughs> the first. The last one you ever write, like on your deathbed, will be the last. It will be, it will be called the last, right. Oh boy. <clears throat> oh, I'm cringing. Okay. I just really love mummies. They make me, uh, they make me want to, and there are two alternate uh, lines with this, I cross the mouse. They make me, uh, the original one said, they make me rumble in my tummy. And then they, and then cross that off and said, I changed my mind, no, 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 this will make more sense. They make me want to play gin rummy. <laughs> and while, I, <laughs> God, and while I eat cookies, the mummies ditch school and play hooky, because you know, that's what they do. Um, and the mummies tie their sister's bow while I play three foot perfect games and make three shots in a row. <laughs> God. The, oh, the oh, mummy's favorite food is worms. Oh, I hate while those worms wiggle and squirm. <laughs> That's basically why I like mummies. But I have to go and play a good game of gin rummy. I caught it. <laughs> and then... I caught it. Uh, oh, uh, illustrations. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then the second one. And it's called... The second poem. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you're telling me that you didn't number all your poems? That would, you know, the third, fourth, fifth, sixth. <laughs> right. It, it, it's, kind, it's kind of funny, I mean, because, like, earlier than this, like, even back as far as 95, I even put titles to the pieces. But apparently, in this, for this project, I was, just, I, I, was just, I was just too good for that, you know? The too second. Good, too good for titles, yeah. The second. People know what you're talking about. Have you heard the second? They're like... <laughs> That's right. Now let me tell you about Egyptian kings. Oh, those nasty kings. They would do such horrible things. God. They would steal, they would cheat, and also lie. But they always kept their eyes peeled. <laughs> they made Egyptians whip the slaves with their whips. Pay attention to this part. They would whip at the tip of their whip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those kings didn't give, but I don't want them to live. <laughs> you know, that's what they did to the Hebrews. Um, <laughs> oh, those nasty kings, they would do such horrible things. And then, you know, I, I tried to, I couldn't draw the proper headwear, so this, these look like earmuffs or headphones, because, you know, they had those back then. <laughs> so that's that. <laughs> Iconic. One <laughs> for the history books. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring you out of the water. Um, okay. 
That's that's done. There are parts where you, I I saw you visibly choke at the <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't like <laughs> it wants to come out. <laughs> oh goodness. Okay, so um a couple of years ago I wrote my uh, fourth epic poem and this one's probably, probably the longest piece I've ever I've ever written and um, it's a horror fantasy crossover, but it means a little more towards horror. And those of you who have either read or seen my book, Wolf, very similar, but even more on the morbid side, I suppose you could say. And so um, this particular piece, uh, I'll just give you a couple of precursors so that uh, whenever I say word or name or whatnot, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, it's, uh, the place that it takes place on uh, Mount Kyle, and it's this mountain I made up within this universe. And um, let me see if there are any other names. Here. Okay, and then the uh, then these creatures called the Narthags are pretty much it's cross between a giant and a troll, very very carnal. Uh, so the, and um, and this this place is uh, known for a lot of folk who wander and they they wish to take their own life and so they plunge off a cliff of this, of this mountain so this is just dedicated to those troubled folk. This piece is called The Skeletons of Mount Carl. This is a supplementary piece I wrote, one of many. They belong to the epic but not in the epic. You see. So, <coughs> Skeletons of Mount Carl. Decomposing contortionists writhing and frozen off the mountainside's perimeter they are indeed cliffhangers, runners from the narthags, monstrosities in the shadows. Skull of detachment, screaming out silent pleas towards the oblivious living, living in luxurious oblivion. Souls on trial, wailing on nights of the red moon. Their unstructured song, answering the chorus call. We are who we are, a cruel gray life we lead lest the flesh wafts off our back. But the skeletons of Mount Carol have found peace at last. The insects make a home, and their larvae crawl out. Once homes for the spirits, now shelters for the lesser evils. Scaves, which is my word for uh, predatory birds, take the banquet, eating the rubbish and sparing the bones. How twigs snap when the scent of fresh meat wanders with the free will of a blind one. Pitch black plummets off the cliff's edge, losing pebbles. Another life condemned by the self, another soul prevented from crossing over into the life they previously believed in. Now only chasing after the sun, lustful burning ball, collective orbs go forthwith and the skeletons of Mount Cairo have found peace at last. I think I'll end that, this on a more positive note. Um, skeletons are leaving themselves into ball pits. Right, that's, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they all go to Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> I wonder why it's so scary. <laughs> I was just going to say those animatronics are enough to give you nightmares. Oh gosh, so my kids were always so afraid of Chuck E. Cheese when they were near them. <laughs> the remastered Chuck E. Cheese with like the new head. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't blame him at all. He's so far away from wherever he was. I, don't, I, don't. I hated him. He was cursed. Creepy. Um. Okay, so this was uh, this was actually published in the. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry, this was, uh, this was a separate piece published in this journal. Uh, but this was a part of uh, my second epic poem that I wrote many years back. And this one, you can tell that there's a story in there somewhere, but it's very, I mean, if you read the whole thing as an outsider, you might say, drug induced? I think so. <laughs> so, um, but it's very, it's very, uh, it's very nature based. and. Um, and so this part of it is just called Rivers. Rivers tell us the secrets that lie beneath our most shallow verdicts. They are used for a delightful choir of blowing leaves, hovering in autumn air, 
wooden debris floats gently while thinking of Utopia's left hand. To civilization, to comrades young and old, to the kisses of life, to a glorious night on the river. Rivers are wandering minds that share the same concept. All but one shall pass humanity and discover spirituality. My dearest ally, the river. Rivers contain our only refreshing hope of surviving a morbid prophecy. If only your distraction feelings could be set aside for the younger generation. They have ways of innocence to spread into this dimly lit world. Let their oblivious eagerness shine on our faces of selfishness. We can try to keep quiet. We should all be so calm. We can only be as calm as a river. Rivers did not predict the upcoming war, the unfortunate rise of the beige enders. With luck, we can only hope that peace will be our shield of mercy. <laughs> Thank you all very much for coming. Wonderful job, Cass.